Hello and welcome to Grief Seeds, a podcast where you'll find insights, reframings, metaphors, and visualizations, all known as Grief Seeds, to help you cultivate growth and healing in your life after loss. My name is Shelby Forsythia. I'm an intuitive grief guide and author, and on this show, I'll share insights from my interactions with clients, wise words from fellow grievers, and personal stories from my own life with the hope that they transform your grief as they have transformed mine. Because even when it doesn't feel like it, we are planting the seeds of growth in the midst of great pain and heartache. Your grief is welcome here. Hi there, grief growers, and welcome to another episode of Grief Seeds. I've got a short one for you today called The Friendly Anthropologist, and this is a mindfulness tool. If you know the source on this, please send it my way, because I'd love to know who invented this, that I use so often in my grief. Because a problem that I faced immediately after the death of my mother, and probably for the first two and a half to three years, and even still to this day sometimes, is this idea that I am my emotions. I'll tell myself these stories that I am sad, I am worthless, I am in a world that is unsafe, I am powerless, I am despairing, I am numb. When in reality, the, the word that's missing from those sentences is I am feeling insert emotion here. I am feeling sad. I am feeling numb. I am feeling disconnected, whatever it may be. And something that really helps me detach from my emotions and observe them with kindness and compassion as opposed to identifying with them as me (laughs) is the friendly anthropologist. And for me, the friendly anthropologist shows up as kind of like a a mid-century safari-looking human. Mine is female identified, yours can be uh, whatever gender or non-binary person that you would like. And she kind of sits right behind me and a little bit above me. And she's got a clipboard in her hands and binoculars around her neck and a cool little safari hat on. And her whole job is to just watch me be human in the world. Just watch me live my life and take notes. That's her whole job. And when I tune into her as a person who is a watcher of my experience, I am able to unplug just a little bit. I'm able to put one pane of glass, a shred, an inch of distance between me and the emotions I'm feeling. So I am no longer an emotion myself, but I am a human having an emotional experience. And in grief, that can mean the difference between me holding my breath and being able to take a breath. So in picturing this friendly anthropologist sitting behind me and a little above, when she takes notes, when I'm in some kind of emotion spiral, when I'm feeling shame, when I'm feeling nostalgia, when I'm feeling overwhelm, she takes notes that sound like this. Oh, interesting. The human thinks that because she's experienced loss, the world is no longer a safe place. Oh, interesting, because today is the 26th and the human's mom died on the 26th. She's feeling sad. Oh, interesting. The human hasn't heard from her friends in a while or her friends haven't asked about her dead person. So she's feeling ignored. Isn't that interesting? And bringing in this neutral language, this curious neutral language, interesting, isn't that interesting? Fascinating, isn't that fascinating? Can help you remove the sting of judgment that you place over emotions that you feel. Because we live in a society, westernized society especially, that qualifies emotions, that puts them in little bad good boxes. It's bad to be angry, it's bad to be sad, it's bad to be numb. It's good to be happy, it's good to be cheerful, it's good to be optimistic, it's good to feel like you have momentum, or that you're making progress. But to bring the friendly anthropologist into the picture, 
is to invite in neutrality, to invite in non-judgment. And if you've been struggling to offer yourself compassion or empathy, or maybe even forgiveness for feeling your feelings in loss, I really challenge you to do this. So if you could have a friendly anthropologist in your life whose only job is to study you, not to judge you, mind you, but just to study you and take notes, what would they look like? What would they wear? Where would they sit or stand in proximity to your body in the world? What would their voice sound like when they speak to you? What would their notes look like? And if they could offer you wisdom in the midst of the emotions that you're feeling, what would it be? I'll tell you that my friendly anthropologist has a great sense of humor because one of the stories I often tell myself when I'm feeling sad or overwhelmed or in a really dark place is that this is going to feel exactly like this as is forever and ever and ever and ever. The the illusion that emotion is unending is very real to me. And this is something almost eight years now after the death of my mother that I am still working on in grief. This work has never finished, grief growers. And so this friendly anthropologist will sometimes turn her clipboard around and show me the notes that she's taking. And she'll laugh. And she'll say, nonsense. Just 10 minutes ago, you were angry. Yesterday, we were nostalgic. (laughs) A week ago, we were even happy. We had joy for five minutes there. Something else is on its way to you already, a different kind of emotional experience based on my research, based on my study of you. And there's no judgment here either. She doesn't say last week you were happy, why can't we channel that again? She just offers this evidence that the emotions I'm feeling, that the experience I'm having is a fluid one and it will continue to change and keep changing. So if I'm in a situation or an emotional experience that I don't like right now, just wait. The data shows (laughs) from this friendly anthropologist that this experience is soon to change. So this friendly anthropologist has a great sense of humor and she is enormously grounding in a grief experience that for me can spiral me emotionally up into the stratosphere when I tell myself the story that there will be no end to this pain that I am in. Even if the alternative to the pain that I am in is a different flavor of pain, so moving from sadness to despair to anger to anguish, or simply moving from pain to rest. She's like, nonsense, the pain can't last forever. At some point, you have to sleep. (laughs) How helpful is that in the aftermath of loss to feel like you have someone who's on your side, non-judgmentally, just watching and observing your experience of grief compassionately and neutrally and curiously. So let her show up for you. Let your friendly anthropologist show up for you. Let them take notes. Let them be interested in your experience. Let them collect data for you on how this experience of grief looks and is going. I invite you to take a deep breath in with me here. And out. Oh dear grief grower, wherever you are in the world, whatever grief you're facing, and whatever the intensity it is today, May you take a breath and take a moment to design and then call in a friendly anthropologist whose only job is to watch and take notes on your experience as a griever. May you feel safe calling on them for help when you're in a place of powerlessness, hopelessness, helplessness, or despair. When you're telling yourself the story that this is going to go on just like this forever and ever. May your friendly anthropologist offer you things that you may not be able to offer yourself right now. Things like non-judgment, compassion, loving kindness, awareness, and maybe humor as well. May you know as you work together 
as you allow yourself to be watched by this friendly anthropologist, that the only thing that they have in mind for you, their only intention, is to study and be of service to you in your grief. They are not looking to change you, improve you, make you any different. They are simply here to watch and love at a bit of a distance so that they can offer you perspective and lenses with which to see that you may not be capable of or able to wear right now in your grief. And as this friendly anthropologist offers you information, data, tools, wisdom, and love, may you be afforded an inch, a shred of space to breathe in the middle of grief. Deep breath in. And out. Thank you so much for joining me today on Grief Seeds. So that's all for this episode of Grief Seeds. Thank you so much for listening today. You can find additional grief support at shelbyforsythia.com or by following me on social media at Shelby for Scythia on Facebook and Instagram. If this podcast helped you in your life after loss, please leave a review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And be sure to share Grief Seeds with a friend, because you never know what someone you love is going through. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for financially keeping this podcast on the air. If you'd like to support Grief Seeds on Patreon through a yearly or monthly pledge, you can do so at patreon.com slash shelbyforsythia. My Patreon supporters get access to behind-the-scenes content including a once-a-month grief support call with me and five 90-minute workshops with topics decided by grievers themselves. Again, that website is patreon.com slash shelbyforsythia. Music for Grief Seeds is performed by Addie Goldstein. As always, my dear grief growers, it was beautiful sharing this space and time with you today. I see you. I am so proud of you and the work that you're doing in the world, and I love you. Because even through grief, we are growing. <laughs>